The Kenya National Union of Nurses says it, it is opposed to the implementation of the new National Hospital Insurance Fund rates. The union's uh, general secretary, Seth Panyako, says the government should take into consideration on proposals from stakeholders in the health sector before implementing the rates. Now, they want to deduct more to the NHIF, which will double this. It can come to even 3 billion from public servants alone. So the contribution that is being made by the public servants through this medical scheme that is existing is already higher than what, what NHIF is asking from, from workers under the new rates. Now, for us to support this NHIF, what are we saying as workers? Number one, we are saying all public servants should have their medical allowance reverted to the payslip. Your payslip is Number two, the government must make a contribution. If workers give three billion to NHIF, the government must give three billion. And in the event that the government does not agree to give the money, then a review of NHIF Act must begin. Elsewhere, 84.1% of Kenyans are against the court ruling allowing the registration of a gays lobby group. This follows a report uh, released by Spectrum Network International. Three weeks ago, the High Court ordered that a government agency that regulates, uh, regulates non-governmental organizations to recognize and register a human rights group seeking to protect the rights of gay people in the country. The ruling stated that blocking such groups is a violation of Article 36 of the Constitution, which provides for freedom of association. It's imperative to note that more people today have gay or lesbian acquaintances, which is associated with acceptance of homosexuality and support for gay relationship to LGBT unions and to societal acceptance of homosexuality more generally is rooted in religious attitudes such as the belief that engaging in homosexual behavior is sinful. As the beatification of the ceremony of Blessed Sister Irene Stefani comes to a close in Nyeri Town, to, uh, Nyeri Town yesterday, code, rela, code leader Raila Odinga is, was calling for toler tolerance among Kenyans, asking them to emulate the life of the new saint. And as Wilson Bull reports, Raila once uh, again called for dialogue in a bid to address Kenya's challenges. I hope that our country can draw a lesson from the life of Sister Irene Stefani to be compassionate to look at your fellow human being just as another human being like yourself, irrespective of his race, gender, or tribe. That we are all one, and you need to be proud to be a Kenyan. And you should be recognized as a Kenyan, that no Kenyan is more equal than the other Kenyans. This is what is most important for us as a people. So we actually live in a very good country and we need to be proud of our country. Yeah. It's a big <laughs> the problems that we have in our country are solvable. We can solve them. We can solve them. And the new chairman of the Council of Governors, Peter Munya, has vowed to push the drive for increased allocations to the counties. Munya criticized MPs seeking to re the return of health function to the national government. He says the provision of health services has improved tremendously following devolution of the sector. He spoke on a Meet the People tour of Meru County. Pack. 
and the National Transport Authority says it will not register any new 14-seater Matatus. NTSA Deputy Director Head of Licensing John Muya said the move aims to reduce congestion on Kenyan roads. Muya said that the licensing will continue for vehicles with a certain capacity of people in urban areas, but the association's proposal is to completely wipe out the 14-seater Matatus. He was speaking at Kennel Town of Moranga County during a meeting with the Matatu Owners Association. The Matatu Owners vehemently oppose the decision by the NTSA, saying it will cripple businessmen who operate the 14-seater Matatus. <laughs> And uh, do you know who Kenya's second vice president was? Well, he served as Kenyatta's second vice president for only four months before he, he was succeeded by Daniel Arap Moy. And here is Katie and Stalin Bichu with that story. Since independence, Kenya has had eight vice presidents and one deputy president. Kenya has also been served by four presidents during the same period. But do Kenyans know who the second vice president was? Makamu apili wa Reis Kenyatta alikuwa Moi. That one uh, I have to check. Do you know who's Kenyatta's second vice president? Yeah, I think I know it was Tomboya. Yeah, alikuwa ni Kalonda Musioka. The second vice president of Kenya was Joseph Murumbi. This is Zuzarte Murumbi, the second vice president to Kenyatta in 1966. Of the eight vice presidents, Joseph At Karanja, Musalia Mudavadi and Joseph Murumbi were the shortest serving vice presidents at different times. Murumbi found himself thrust into the center of leadership in 1966 after Oginga Odinga during Jomo Kenyatta's regime. He served for only four months from the 3rd of May to the 31st of August. This son of a Goan trader and a Maasai woman then quit politics in the same year after the first political assassination of Pio Gamapinto in Kenya. Articles written about him say he was an artifact collector. The Kenya National Archives has set up the Murumbi Gallery within the building displaying the different African artifacts that were collected by the rarely spoken of man of history. Everything you are seeing down here and up there was collected by Murumbi. Some of the 8,000 rare books, those published before the year 1900, are contained in a library inside the Kenya National Archives entrusted for safety upon his death in the year 1990. His body lies at the Morumbi Peace Memorial in City Park, Nairobi. The only shrine and graves around where he rests are as old as time can tell. Exactly 10 years after he was laid to rest, his wife Sheila Murumbi was also laid next to him. However, 25 years on, most Kenyans still do not know who Joseph Murumbi was. Stanley Mbichu, KTN, Nairobi. Thank you for that, Stanley. We are taking a short break, but don't go too far. Michael Karanja will be joining us from their business desk with an interview. And welcome back to KTN News Desk. I'm Michael Karanja. Three pillars to housing when you want to own a home. Land, uh, methodology of, of actually making that house and the finances. And just to help us discuss what alternatives are there to help you get affordable housing in Kenya, I'm now joined by George Washiuri, CEO of Optiven Kenya Limited. George, karibu sana. Asante sana, thank you. Last time we were chatting, we were talking about how difficult it has been for most Kenyans to own homes. Is that still the situation as it is right now? Yes, I would say that it's very, very uh, challenging for yeah. the normal Kenyan, yeah. uh, especially the young people, to own their own homes because the houses in Kenya is quite expensive. Bearing in mind that our cost of land is very high and yeah. also the, the process of, of uh, getting this land and also building the house is quite expensive uh, uh, for our Kenyan people. 
just looking at the rental market, we saw a survey by the uh, by how by national, national housing, and they were saying almost 40 percent of people's income is actually going to rents. When you look at that situation and uh, changing the mindset where people can now actually own something they can call their own when you look at that vis-a-vis -vis that strong desire to own a home how then does that make you feel as someone in the real estate industry one of the things that we must realize as kenyans is that uh, our people they say 75 percent of our people in urban areas are renting while other countries like singapore 90 percent they own homes yeah. and for us in, de in uh, as developers we have a big job to do to ensure that our people get uh, houses yeah. however for some of us like Optven limited we have a job to do because we have to educate our kenyan people to accept the new technologies of building you realize that in in, uh, in other countries they don't use the real stone and mortar yeah. they use other technologies and uh, uh, for us developers we have to educate our population so that we are able to house these people because we don't do that it means that uh, for the years to come we're gonna have these challenges I'm sure you are aware that by the year 2030, we require about 15 million houses because the population is increasing. It's so increasing. we must have other technologies to ensure that our Kenyan people get homes. Talking of technology, you about three weeks ago, you signed a partnership with Koto Housing, bringing up on board something that's quite different to the way people, what people are used to in the market. So leave the brick and mortar, now you go into slabs and prefabricated homes. Is that kind of methodology catching on in the Kenyan market? That is the, the, new, tech, the new methodology because yeah. we don't do it. We're going to have a lot of uh, issues. And the reason why as often we went for these affordable technologies is because we have been dealing with land. We have yeah. been selling value-added plots and over the years over eight years we have a lot of our customers with already value-added land they have water they have power they have what it takes but when it comes to construction yeah. it's a real challenge because they require a lot of money and also it takes time to finish a house for example we're doing some house for customers it takes about seven to eight months to finish one house yeah. but the new technology that we sign with Koto housing is going to take 30 to 45 days you have your house ready to occupy and we are very excited about it and what we discuss is to have a sample house because our Kenyan people need to touch, they need to see, they need to feed it. So we are going Before to do a show house <laughs> in all our projects called the Victory Gardens, Nikitengela. And once our Kenyan people see it, we are able to advocate for the new technologies and we are very excited about it. Just when you look at it vis-a-vis -vis what people are used to, is it a cheaper way of going about it? Because you know, land prices is not the cheapest thing in Kenya. Uh, when it comes to construction, it's also not cheap. So and then when you look at the financier, but when you look at the way now that is primed and then little uh, less time that it needs that is required to put up a home is it something that is going to be bought in into the Kenyan psyche when it comes to home ownership if uh, since the time we launched the campaign yeah. uh, we are calling it you like it we replicate yeah. because you have to see it then you like it we do the house for you and uh, we have seen a lot of excitement across yeah. social media and it's the way to go because to do this house it will take a shorter period yeah. it's also slightly ex uh, ex uh, uh, lower than the brick and mortar uh, technology and of course uh, uh, have seen Kenyans uh, accepting the technology and uh, we are waiting to see once we finish the, the, the show house to see the response from the public but so far so good construction costs key to this challenge but when you look at it how what kind of a reduction are we looking at we are looking at 20 percent deduction yeah yes and look when it comes to the financing aspect of it have you also been able to bring on board people in the financial services industry just to look at the w what is happening the new way of doing real estate in this market and whether that is acceptable and something that they want to partner with right now be, uh, between uh up the limited and the quarter housing yeah. we are doing a lot of uh, meetings we had a meeting with the financial institutions and they're also excited about it because uh, they know that the, the challenge of housing in kenya is not uh, only one person problem yeah. it's a it's a countrywide problem and we are getting a lot of support from financiers and right now we are training the valuers so that when they come to value this uh, uh, house yeah. they are able to see is it can it last 100 years 90 years and uh, the response has been very very good and uh, we are happy that uh, our customers who are going to come in they are going to be financed by these financial institutions is there a limitation when using this new modern technology is there a limitation in what people can have because with, uh, with, 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 with stones you can make an expansive uh, building that you might <laughs> want to call home but is, are you limited when using modi modern technology in what you can have this modern technology is very interesting because yeah. uh, especially for the target market we are targeting these yeah. are people who don't have a lot of money they can actually do a growing house you can do one room we do the foundation the time you get the money you do the second room the third room and you keep expanding and um, it's a technology that even if you go to go uh, three, four floors, you can. Like now we are doing a show house for Amazonet that goes the yeah. up to level one, which is uh, going to be very exciting. I'm sure that I'll invite uh, the media people to see it when they're opening on 1st of August yeah. because that's the time we're opening the new house. Obviously, there's a lot of focus, renewed focus on entry level market. Uh, I've been talking to some people and they were actually saying you should start hitting 
especially people as soon as they're getting out of college to actually start thinking about some of these investments when yes. it comes to whether it's uh, uh, at the NSE or even when it comes to land and mm -hmm. home ownership. When you look at that, is that the target market that you're looking for? Uh, for us, uh, between Oakville and Koto Housing, we are looking at that target market, yeah. young people because 50% uh, of our population are young people. And we do a lot of education. Uh, for us at, at Optiven, we yeah. have forums called uh, Personal Transformation Talks, and we encourage these people to start investment as soon as they clear school. We even yeah. go to universities to talk about investments because our people don't have the saving culture. You know, once they get a job, they want to spend, 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 but we, we are talking to them to ensure that they start saving for the house. We're also encouraging financial institutions to come up with packages whereby yeah. young people can save for a mortgage. Because there's that perception that people hit fear mortgages. Yet, people like us, when we are clearing school, we got our first mortgage immediately that month after we finished school. So we encourage these people who are clearing universities and getting new jobs to start saving for that mortgage. Because if we don't do that, it means the challenges are going to be higher and more and more. 15 million houses by 2030, obviously, the demand is there. So when we start, when there's that psyche where mortgage uptake can, can also be increased in this market, what will that do to ease the pressure that is already existing on the current infrastructure for housing? Uh, right now, because of the, of course, there's a lot of government goodwill yeah. and, the, and the coming of the county governments. Because I tell people that the demand for houses now is even more in the counties. Yeah. Because they need to house the government or employees and people who are, are working in the counties. Uh, and uh, and uh, for us, we see um, the current supply for houses is very limited. Yeah. Forget about the high, high end houses. I'm talking about houses below 10 million. Yeah. We don't have those houses. There are not many. And uh, going forward, given that our population is young, and these are people who are going to get married and get jobs and they, after getting married and getting a job, what do you want? You need a house. Yeah. So the demand is going to increase. Look at the, the middle class. It's also increasing. It's going up every other day. And the, the demand for houses, uh, if we don't, as developers, we don't do something now, we're going to have a lot of challenges when it comes to the year 2030. And um, what is happening in Kenya today is that there are a lot of people who are willing to come yeah. to development, but we need government support. Look at the, the, the planning of the counties. We are telling the, the governors that right now they are in charge of their counties. Can they segregate or plan for their counties whereby if Open goes today to say we want to do 1,000 residential houses, the space. is there a space uh, separated for that purpose? Are there facilities? How is the sewer system? How is the water? Look at what Open we are doing. We are doing the water, we are doing the infrastructure. Why? Because the counties are not well organized. And we are challenging them through the Kenya Private Developers Association yeah. that the, the, the area we plan for our counties the better for this nation. If we don't, we are going to develop slums in all the counties. Look at Nairobi. Nairobi is a big slum. <laughs> if we don't plan for these <laughs> unplanned, 47 unplanned counties, construction. we are going to be in a big mess. Yeah. And that's the challenge. That's the message we are giving the governors. Let us plan now so that when the developers like Open comes to your county, if you want to do commercial properties, there's a space for that. If you want to do residential properties, there's space for that. It's not where the ones that were co commercial now people are doing residential. Exactly. At what were look, at the farms. look at the confusion in yeah. Maradaima. There are industries there. The other day they had an, a big issue, you know, pollution. There are residentials there. There are commercial buildings there. It is total confusion. But it is never too late. We can be able to sort out this thing right now going forward when you look at land obviously a company like yours gets an edge because you're able to get to give service plots where someone who doesn't have to think about looking for the water the sewage or the electricity when you look at that whole land equation is it something perhaps that should be taken through the government uh, through the institution su institutions such as the national housing uh, uh, authority where the, perhaps they can actually take up w and actually service these uh, parcels of land, making it even attractive for developers who come on board later on to put up projects. I think that would be exciting, and that is the message uh, people like Copvin and other developers, that's the message we are giving the, the government, both yeah. the national government and the county government, because if you can do this servicing, let me tell you, even the cost of housing is going to be cheaper. Yeah. Look at what we are doing at Optiven. We are doing the boreholes, we are doing the water piping, we are doing the greening, planting trees within the project. We are fencing that project. All that cost goes to the customers. But you can imagine if the government can do that for us as developers. We can even do more houses for our Kenyan people. But right now, chunk of the money goes to the value addition. And um, we have a job to do. But I'm happy that uh, for us at Optiven, we are members of Kenya Private Sector Alliance. And we are also members of Kenya Private Developers Association. And we have been engaging National Arts Commission. Yeah. We have been engaging the ministry. And we want to push this order for us uh, to be able to develop houses for our people. If everything remains constant and things go the way you want, what do you see in future perhaps being the entry level prices for houses in this market? It uh, depends on, uh, you know, Kenyans are very interesting. Yeah. The cost of a house depends on finishing. Yeah. Look at what we are doing between Optivian and Koto Housing. We have a standard design yeah. whereby we can come and do a design and then you select your kind of finishing. Yeah. 
if you just do a standard design, you can be able to do that house using yes. really limited resources. You can do a one bedroom with, uh, with about half a million, two bedroom with about 1.2 million, a maison net with about 4.5 million. Yes. But it all depends on the finishing. And that's the language we are telling the young people that don't go for very high end finishing. What you require is an accommodation. Straight out of house. university. <laughs> exactly. It's a house to stay and also save that 50% of your gross income. All right. Thank you very yes. much. That's been George Washiu, CEO of Optive and Kenya Limited, just telling us about the changing trends, what that is happening in the real estate sector and what can be done to make it much more affordable for consumers coming to the housing market. Ian Wafula, what happened on the soft spotting front? Well, and that story brings us to a close this afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us. Of course, to join us on subsequent bulletins. Our Twitter handle is at KTN Kenya. Do let us know what is happening around you. My name is Ian Ofula. Have a lovely afternoon.